welcome to another episode of Jay Lono's Garage. You know, the fun thing about this website is you meet other people that have cool websites, and you all help one another. And I discovered a bike I'm going to show you on a website called Bike Urious. Now, it, it's really interesting. It's based on the Enfield Bullet. Okay? See, we love hot rodding. We like people who take something stock and just make it something faster and cooler. But before we do that, let me introduce you to Abby. Abby has this website, Bike Urious. How are you, Abby? Good to I'm see good. you. Good to see you again, Jay. Thank now, you. I think your website is fantastic. It's all motorcycles, but it's not just Japanese bikes. It's all, you have vintage, you have classic. You cover the whole range of motorcycles, yeah. don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's one of those things that started just because I'm obsessed about bikes. Right. You know, it, no matter what it is, I enjoy riding it. I've uh, done a few rides in the past where, you know, last summer I went to the top of Alaska on a bike, and then a couple years ago I did a border-to-border -border run from Canada to, to Mexico in less than 24 hours. Now, he comes from my hometown of Randover, Massachusetts. That's right. And that's kind of cool. Yeah. So we have something in common there. Yeah. And, and the fact that you find all these unusual bikes, in fact, the bike we're going to see in a few minutes, I found through your website. I would never have known about this. You know, the fun thing about America is hot rodders come from all walks of life. Uh, Arkis Duntoff, the famous Corvette guy, yeah. he was from Russia. Yeah. Other guys are from Poland. And I see more and more young men and women from India yeah. coming to America, getting into hot rodding, right. and it's really kind of cool. And yeah. that's what your friend has done, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. And this is a bike built in India. This is the Royal Enfield. Now, the Royal Enfield was originally made in England. Then, uh, I guess, India bought the rights to it, or? Yeah, well, there ha what was happening was you had a lot, when the British colonized India, right. you had a lot of British army, British soldiers, things like that, and so to make it easier, they were selling bikes, they were producing bikes in India right for that market. And even though it's a vintage-looking bike, it has fuel injection, mm -hmm. and it's fairly modern and up-to-date, and it's hugely popular in India. But India, like every place else, has hot rodders, and they like to make things go faster, and maybe even add more cylinders if they have to. And that's what your friend has done, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Now, what's his name? Tell us his name. Now, his name is Anikit Vardhan. Right. And like you said, he's been able to take one of these single cylinders and, and make it a V-twin. Now, he too was born in India, yep. but came to America. Yep. And I find it fascinating, rather than do a Harley, which everybody does, he's Indian, so you do an Indian bike. That's I, right. I mean, I, he's right over here. Let's show you the bikes he's done. Anikit, how are you? Good to see you. Delighted to meet you, Jay. God, it's good to see you. I must say, you are a master fabricator and builder. These look Thank like you. factory motorcycles Thank to me. Thank you. Uh, not only does he add an extra cylinder, he makes the pattern himself, not using 3D print, using wood, right? You carve, yes. carve it in wood. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is great stuff. Uh, he casts his own cylinders. And he makes this, this is a 1,000 cc, and this is what, a 700? 700, yes. Okay, now this is, this is based on a much earlier Royal yes. Enfield, isn't it? Right, this is based, actually both of these bikes are based on what was the original British Royal Enfield bullet, which had a cast iron barrel, had a separate gearbox, separate crankcase, and a separate clutch case, and it was basically a quintessential 1950s style British uh, single. So, for the longest time, I think up to the late 2000s, Royal Enfield in India made that version of the bike, and then various regulations with uh, emissions and noise and so on, had them redesign the engine with fuel injection to meet all those new requirements. But for almost 50 years, they made that motorcycle as it was made in 1955, virtually right. unchanged. Right. That's the bike I grew up looking at in India and saying, one day I want that thing which goes dug, 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 dug. Right. And when I was in college, I got one, and that's half the story. And what blew my brains was one day I was riding my bicycle, and I stop at the store, and I'm going to buy pencils or something, and I see this motorcycle parked outside, and it is unlike anything I've ever seen. And I stand there, and it seems like it has two engines. Right. And I had never seen anything with two engines before. Right. So I stand there and I'm waiting to see who does it belong to, what's he look like, is he going to ride it, what's it going to sound like? And the guy comes out and I ask him and it turns out it is a Harley Davidson WLA from World War II. Oh, okay. So and it's just a twin cylinder. It is, but <laughs> compared to the other little 100cc, 150cc sure. scooters and mopeds which I'd grown up seeing, yeah. it was something from another planet. Right. So I'm frothing at the mouth now because I want to hear what this thing sounds like because it's 
gonna sound like something else. And how old were you in all this? I time? was 19. 19, okay. I was in architecture school, not right. paying much attention to architecture, paying right. more attention to my Royal Enfield Bullet, which and I was And of course, your parents must have been thrilled that <laughs> you're an architectural student, but you're in You're tinkering with bikes all day, you're going down the tubes. Every Indian parent's <laughs> dream, their kid is gonna work with motorcycles. <laughs> Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so go ahead, continue. So this guy comes and I find out and then he goes on it and he goes, shoo-choo, boom, and it goes, and my mouth hangs open because in that one second, I realized that thing sounds like a gigantic human heartbeat. Right. Because the human heartbeat is not evenly spaced thuds like, Duk, 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 duk. The right. heart beats duk, 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 right. duk, 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 duk. Right. Said, that motorcycle sounds like a heartbeat. Right. And it was that moment when, you know, when you have your first kiss or you ride your bicycle for the first time right. and you have that moment which will never happen again when you realize that life from now on is not going to be the same. Right. Right. So kind of like in that movie Vertigo where our main guy falls in love with this woman who then is gone. She's right. lost. And he is so shattered by that that he tries to recreate that woman from another woman. All right. And I try to do that with his motorcycle. Right. right. <laughs> and, of course, I'm sure it broke your mother's heart when you came home with a motorcycle. It went thump, thump. So it's kind of come full circle. Yes. You hear a heart, you break a heart. Oh, my okay. God. That's but the amazing spot on. thing to me is that, well, look at some of these photos. He did all this himself, did all these castings. Now, you, there's a picture in the book that you gave me I thought was amazing where you were carving into the wood and you found something. Tell them about that. So the patterns, like I wanted to make it the way they would have made it back in the 1950s. Like it was mm. not just like make an engine, but really have the flavor and the feel for that time period mm -hmm. when there was no you know, automatic 3D printing and everything. Right. And, and plus when you're carving wood, it is so much more satisfying to work with a beautiful piece of wood than it is to work with a piece of synthetic plastic, right, which is right. used these days. Right. So I had these chunks of gorgeous kiln-dried seasoned maple, and I love maple because I also build guitars, and oh, you know okay. I make my necks out of maple, so right. I love the maple. And I'm machining it, and suddenly my tool makes this angry sound, and I stop, and I pull it out of there, and it's a small bullet. Oh, like a bullet from a rifle which was wedged in the tree from which that piece of wood came. Oh, okay. And I tell myself, okay, I'm working on an engine for a motorcycle called a Royal Enfield Bullet. Ah. I'm making the pattern, and inside the wood, there's a bullet. It, it is, is a sign from it is a there. sign from above, yes. <laughs> I couldn't put it better. Yes, it is a sign. <laughs> you are absolutely right, sir. That's right. Now, you call this the Enfield Musket because... Yes. Bullet, musket, okay. Gun. I mean, I must say, do people think this is a factory bike? The first question which people ask is, what year is it? Right. And I tell them, and they say, did, they, you, did you restore it? And I tell them, no, I didn't actually restore it. That motor is made from scratch. And that's when they say, ah, tell me more. And then I tell them yeah. more. Well, I mean, it's beautifully, I mean, imagine what we're saying here. You take some wood and you, you essentially carve the cylinder and then you cast it and then you have to allow for shrinkage yes. and all of that. So obviously, yes. and you're a very educated engineer, correct? Not engineer, Jay. I did architecture. Okay. And then when I came to the US, I did a master's in industrial design, okay. which is product design, but still not engineering. Okay, but you have your master's. Yes. Okay, smart guy. I'll go with smart guy. <laughs> I wouldn't say master's means smart. Uh, you know. It's smarter than me. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, not. Yeah, it's smarter than me. So <laughs> I, I have to, I must say, the level of detail, I mean, it's just so nice to see it done the old-fashioned way. That's what I was going I mean, for. there's a great joy in working with your hands. Everybody now works sort of with computers. Right. So to meet someone like yourself who's so much younger than I am and enjoys working with their hands, it makes me realize, oh, maybe the old ways aren't going to die out, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's, oh, it's just fantastic. So tell us some more about the problems you encountered. I mean, did you get the cylinder uh, design right the first time? Or did you have to make a number of patterns? The pattern actually worked perfectly fine the very first time, Jay, but the, the big hiccup, the big, you know, oh dear moment was that um, I am teaching design at an art and design school in Columbus, the Columbus School of Art and Design, and in my spare time on the weekends, I'm working on this project. Right. So I've designed it, I've drawn it up, and I'm making the casting patterns out of wood, 
And it's taken a couple of years at least of doing this, and I haven't done it. I'm trying to find a foundry which is going to pour the sure. molten aluminum in there. So there's a place in town which is kind of busy, and they say, nah, we won't be able to do it, but there's one guy, and he's a small shop, and he might be able to help you. So I go there. It is a small shop. And um, so the guy says he will do it, and I go and I drop off my patterns, and he says, come back next week. And I go back next week, and he basically, it, he says it doesn't work out, and you're going to have to make some changes, and so on and so forth. So I go to pick up my box, and I see something's wrong. And I pick up my box of patterns, and my fingers are shaking right now because I'm, I'm telling you this because this was bad. He put them next to a window. It had rained furiously over ah. the weekend, and my box with my painstakingly made patterns made over two years had been soaked, oh. and they'd been sitting wet until the bottom of the patterns had just swelled and split and basically just wrecked them. Oh, man. So for three, I mean, the furnace was going on there, and I had to you know, really think this carefully that should I push that guy into the furnace and run for it and that's it, I'm free and clear? Yeah. yeah. Or that would kind of mess things up right. and, and, and they will probably put me in jail and then I'm not going to be able to build a bike. Right. So right. I just picked up my box and I just walked out of there and I left. And, and by the way, those days I had a 1950 Plymouth. Oh, okay. That made me feel a little better. Right. So okay. anyway, side note. So I go back home. For three months, I don't touch it. I said, this is too depressing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to not look at it, because if I do, I'll start crying and, and plotting revenge and negative things like that. Right. So after three months or so, OK, I'm, a, I'm fine. I'll get back to it. So I just cut the whole messed up parts away, and I made them all over again. Wow. And you know, sanded and smoothed and everything, and then sp spray the clear coat. And then you can't really tell anything happened. And then I looked for a different foundry, and I found a great place in Toledo, and I'd love to uh, give you their name, Seaport Mold. Right. And they are a prototyping foundry. They will give you one casting if you want, or they'll give you 100. And they're so amazing that the owner told me that, get here 8 o'clock in the morning. We will cast them on the same day, wow. and you take them back home. Oh, OK. I said, OK. And 8 o'clock morning, I was there. And uh, sure enough, I had profusely had my camera clicking constantly with them packing the sand on the mold and melting the aluminum and pouring it and they gave me castings and I came back home and and that was the first big day of it is actually in metal now it's no longer a piece of wood and it can't work with a piece of wood but wow and then that, that was the one major setback. Well, yeah, like, and that's uh, a huge setback. <laughs> yes. Well, a lot of other people might have given up. I'm glad you didn't yeah. because uh, the end result is really, really impressive. So that's a 1,000 cc, yes. and this is a 700. Yes. Uh, well, it's, just, it's just fascinating to me. Okay, uh, what, tell me about the transmission. You have sure. To, what do you, what um, do you have to do there? This motor will drop into the stock crankcase. I beef up the clutch so it can handle the extra torque with right. extra clutch springs. And that same gearbox, which the bullets have, is what Royal Enfield in the UK back in the day used all the way up to their interceptor models, which are the 750s. Sure, I remember. And they made With about the neutral finder. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the exact same box with the neutral finder. And they were able to use that box all the way up to like the 52 horsepower interceptors. So that box was beefy enough to handle that. Wow. So this motorcycle should be putting out, like, let's say, just under 50 horsepower. So I am using the stock box with the beefed up clutch, and so far, no issues at all. And the story with that engine is that once I finished this one and I put some videos up on YouTube, I got a lot of views and emails from folks saying that I would really like to have an engine like that and put it in my bullet. Are you going to make more of these? Yeah. So then this whole thought process of, okay, if we had to make these for potential enthusiasts or customers, how should I go about it? Do I need to change something? Do I need to improve some details? Yeah. Do I need to make it easier to manufacture? So that resulted in a complete redesign. And that engine has a totally different crankcase, which was molded again from scratch. And I made the patterns all over again. Everything got done all over again. Wow. New castings, new everything. And with this one, what I did was that it allows the customer to choose if they want the 350 heads on there or the 500. So they can order a 700 right. or a 1000. I see. So this one has a tighter V angle because after that one being a slightly wider V because I wanted to be as smooth as possible right. and be as cool as possible What's temperature that, wise. Degree? No, that, no, that's a 70 degree V. Oh, 70. Okay. Oh, and, yeah. That's okay. I'm and thinking. this one's a oh, 59. Okay. So tighten it up and it's uh, closer to what? A Vincent angle? Yeah, that's like a Vincent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. See, I, I thought when I first saw this, 
you had just gotten a couple of heads off a couple of bullets and adapted them, but you didn't. You, he uh, made the heads. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty, pretty impressive. And these so, are kickstart only. Those right? are kickstart only, yes. Not that fancy electric stuff. No, it, nah. that would add a dramatic amount of uh, machining and weight right. and manufacturing complexity to it. So keep it true to that vintage Brit bike thing where you just kick it over and you go. I kept it with kickstart only. Do you think of this as an Indian motorcycle or as a British motorcycle? Because when you were a kid, they were built in India. Yes, you know. yes, still. Yeah. yeah. I think it's kind of a hybrid. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's something which was originally created in England, adapted in India, and then this thing was dreamt up here in the US, and this is where it was possible to do it. And the fun thing about India to me is, it's a bit like England after the war. You have all these little shops with these extremely talented machinists yeah and painters and detail people. Yes. They're not organized at all. One guy's here, yes. another guy's way over there. One guy could be in his mother's basement. You know, it's, it's not a factory. It's, yes. it, it's, it's fascinating to craftsmen. me. Craftsmen. Because yep. I've met so many Indian craftsmen. You know, while we're sitting here playing video games or watching TV, yeah. they're actually making stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fascinating. Well, I am anxious to, uh, to hear it run. Can we start it up? Absolutely. So oh. do you use any? Any stock, uh, stock bullet parts on this? All the stock bullet internal parts will fit, like the connecting rods, oh, okay. the pistons, the heads, the valves, the cams, the push rods. And all of these parts are available, upgraded, high performance from uh, various places like Hitchcock's in the UK right. and Ace Performance Bullets. Uh, these, these are guys who are really good friends of mine. And they get a custom forged piston made they order Carrillo con rods. Right. They get the head ported by Joe Mondello's shop, and they get 40 horses from the 535 cc wow. single. Okay. So one thing we're going to do later on is to do a V-twin version using their high performance parts, and then we end up with close to 80 horses. Wow. That and then we need disc brakes <laughs> and plenty of torque. Well, go ahead, fire it up. Let's see how she goes. Okay. Usually she won't need the choke on a warm day. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it is a sign. Much like the bullet. <laughs> Can we take it for a ride? Absolutely. Let's take it for a ride. As you see, it's got a nice V-twin rumble to it, like a classic Vincent or Bros Superior. Now, if you're looking at the head, you might notice, hey, why are the spark plugs there? No wires attached. Well, that's where the compression release normally would be. In the old days, you'd pull a lever and it'd raise the exhaust valve and make it easier to kick through. Uh, but as Annika said, those can leak. So what he's done, he's just done a couple of spark plugs in there, but he is gonna make this dual plug head. He'll make it, uh, have both plugs firing, will make it even more efficient. So I'm anxious to take for a ride. It's a nice size bike. It's pretty light. What does it weigh, do you know? 420. 420 pounds, so. And the classic V-twin rumble. feel like a production ready motorcycle you know to compare it, it's like going from the bullet to a 50 caliber and at 420 to pounds it's really flickable you can throw this thing around I love the neutral finder that's pretty neat a lot of times the bike draw is kicking down, second first, second first, second first. You know, the real surprise to this motorcycle is how little heat it throws. As I said before, it's about 100 degrees here today in Los Angeles, and I thought my legs would be roasting, but it's obviously not. Probably because the compression ratio is not that high. It's a nice torquey motor and it feels about, well, twice as fast as a bullet. The 
just fun to roll on that big tour. It really does feel like a mid-50s classic British V-twin. It's gotta make you wonder if a guy in Columbus, Ohio can do this at his house, why can't an uh, Indian make a V-twin like this? I think it'd be really popular. See, this bike is built for a special class of person. Bullets are really for people that like metal in their motorcycles, not plastic. I don't mean that in a sarcastic way. I just mean there are some motorcycles that need to look like motorcycles. Maybe they don't have to be the fastest or the quickest stopping or the best handling, but they need to look like motorcycles. And bullets have always looked like the classic interpretation of a motorcycle. Metal fenders, metal tank, metal around here, chrome uh, headlight rim, you know, the whole deal. And it's kind of fun, and it's still only 420 pounds. And how cool is it when you pull up to a motorcycle meet people say, what kind of bike is that? And you go, oh, I made it myself. You made the engine. Think of how many manufacturers don't even make their own engine. Boy, I get almost no vibration at all from the mirrors. I mean, I've driven antique Harleys and stuff where you can't, you can't even see your own reflection. It's shaking so much, but no buzziness coming through the bars. I mean, there's a nice thump, 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 but not, not buzziness. It's not uncomfortable. Well, what a nice bike this is to ride. You know, it's not the fact that it it does anything better than anything else. The fact that it does everything very nicely. I mean, it's got 18,000 miles on it, and it was made by one person by hand. I mean, this is a close. This is as close to having a baby as a guy will ever get. You know, you make something, you create it, it drives, it breathes, it gets you around. It's it's pretty amazing. You know, I think it's just fantastic. You know, it, it restores my sort of faith in America. You know, that people come here from all over the world with their dreams to make something and build something. And that's what this young man has done here. Look at this, there's no weeping around any of the cylinders. None of the base gaskets are leaking. Haven't had to make any excuses. Transmission's a little bit notchy, but that's okay. That's not the end of the world. It just drives so nicely. It doesn't throw any heat. It's really beautifully, beautifully done. And to shake the hand of the man who built this, come on in, come on in, let's see, man. I am very impressed. Thank you, Thank you so much. You're a very, you, you're a very modest guy. Thank you. I'm, come on in, Abby. I, mean, I want to thank Abby, too. I found out about this through his website, Bike Curious. Now, people can buy and sell bikes on your website, Absolutely. too, right? Yeah? right? yeah. So if you have a really cool bike you think you'd like to put on his website, uh, send him an email. But I just want to thank you for uh, really making something really different and fun. I mean, anybody can go out and buy a motorcycle. How many people can build a motorcycle and make the cylinders and the crank? It's, it's, it's just amazing. So congratulations. Thank you, Jay. There you go. Thank you very much. Your mother would be proud. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>